Lots of people don't bother to press the button at pedestrian crossings. Do they know something the rest of us don't? It can seem like the longest two minutes of your life. You get to a road junction just as the red man appears. If it's a busy junction, anywhere in the UK, you might see people who don't bother pressing. Ask them and they'll tell you it doesn't do anything. It's not an absurd theory. In New York, they are sometimes referred to as placebo buttons as in many locations they appear to have no effect. But in the UK does pushing the button make any difference? The short answer is, it depends. At a standalone pedestrian crossing, unconnected to a junction, the button will turn a traffic light red. At a junction it is more complicated. Take one very busy crossing, at the intersection between Regent Street and Cavendish Place, near the BBC's HQ in London and you immediately start to doubt the button's efficacy. Sometimes people press it, sometimes they don't. In both cases there is a 105 second interval between the red man coming on and the green man appearing. This is mid-afternoon. In the morning it is slightly longer, 110 seconds. At night, the button does act to stop the traffic, says Transport for London. But this is only between the hours of midnight and 7 o'clock. In the daytime, the button has no effect. It's not just in the capital. The UK uses a traffic system called SCOOT, split cycle offset optimization technique, so the same overall principles apply whatever town or city you live in. Edinburgh has roughly 300 traffic junctions of which about 50-60 are junctions where the green man comes on automatically. In the jargon this is known as walk with. It is usually where a one-way street connects with another road. The green man comes on whenever the red traffic light shows. At night this might change but during busy times the system is automated. In Manchester, around 40% of the push buttons don't need to be pressed during busy pedestrian times. This is made up of those pedestrian green men that are walk with traffic, and those set remotely on a timer from our central computer, a transport for Greater Manchester spokeswoman says. The times vary depending on the junction but the maximum wait time is 60 seconds. The details may vary but a similar system operates in Cardiff and Glasgow. Traffic junctions can be divided into two main types, those where all vehicle traffic is stopped at once for the pedestrians, and those where part of the junction is stopped for pedestrians while on the other half, motorized traffic gets a green light. At the first type, such as the busy Oxford Circus Junction in central London where two main roads intersect. It is always necessary for a pedestrian to press the button in order to get a green man. If they do not, the traffic lights will miss out the pedestrian phase of the cycle and simply alternate between giving a green light to each road. The time that a traffic light stays green for is influenced by sensors in or above the road, which tell the traffic system whether cars are waiting. If there are no vehicles waiting at a side street, the main road will get a continuous green. A cynic might argue the button is occasionally there merely to give the pedestrian the illusion of control. So are they misleading people? It could be interpreted in that way, says Anna Collins, policy lead for pedestrian crossings at campaign group Living Streets. On the other hand, having push buttons at every light brings consistency. It reinforces the message that it may be better to wait for the green man than charge out into the traffic she says. The philosopher Julian Baggini says it's demeaning being misled even on something so seemingly trivial. We want to be treated as intelligent, autonomous agents rather than being manipulated. Transport for London denies it is misleading people. There are 4,650 pedestrian crossings in London of which about 2,500 are at junctions. At the majority of these junctions the button controls the green man, says Ian Blackmore head of traffic infrastructure at TFL. It is difficult to say how many are completely automated and how many operated by the button without someone analyzing each junction, he says. Outside London, the decision for programming crossings is for the local authority. A Department for Transport spokeswoman says that at busy junctions the pedestrian crossing may be programmed to come up every time even if no one presses the button. Sometimes the reasons for a non-responsive button are not traffic related. In 2012 TfL changed the pedestrian setting at Henley's Corner in North London after discussions with the Jewish community. Orthodox Jews are not allowed to operate electronic machinery on the Sabbath. The change means that from sundown on Friday to sundown on Saturday the pedestrian crossing operates on an automated program rather than via pressing the button. The maximum wait time for a green man in the UK is set at 2 minutes says Martin Lowe, 
Transport Commissioner for Westminster City Council. That can feel like a long time. Lowe wants councils to help pedestrians to cross even if there is a red man, instead of constructing barriers. Westminster is putting in perch islands in the middle of roads to allow pedestrians to get across. And here is where the UK differs from some other countries. The British pedestrian looks to cross whatever the lights, merely checking whether any traffic is approaching. The law is on the pedestrian side, except on motorways, certain other roads, and, although not usually enforced, in Northern Ireland. In Washington DC, say, this behavior would be seen as at best daring and at worst an example of illegal jaywalking. The British historian Felipe Fernandez Armesto was arrested in Atlanta for jaywalking after crossing at the wrong place. In some North European countries, it is against the law. In others, merely likely to raise eyebrows. This is about safety not just convenience, says Benjamin Haydecker. Professor of Transport Studies at University College London. There might be a case for bringing in a jaywalking law in the UK, he argues. Lowe says it's a terrible idea. He believes in the individual's right to choose when it's safe. If it's a red man but safe to cross you should let someone. We need to get away from the traffic management approaches of the past like putting guardrails everywhere. There's no need to remove buttons says Baggini. But a little more honesty about what they do would be nice. Traffic planners don't need to mislead us. They can just honestly say, look, all pedestrian crossings have buttons because that makes it easier. Some do nothing, but believe us, your urban pedestrian travel experience would be worse without them.